Hey guys, welcome to the Pool Man University videos. And today we are talking to Bob Lowry and Bob Lowry is the founder of PCTI.online, which is the Pool Chemistry Training Institute. Guys, we are gonna put a link down below so that you can go to his website and we'll talk soon about some of the classes that he's going to be having very soon. We'll post the links down below as well. On these videos, what we do guys is we answer the Pool Guys and Pool Girls questions with Bob. Bob, the next question that was sent to us is, I saw a video on the Pool Man University where you explain that liquid chlorine does not raise the pH. So what does cause the pH to go up in my pool? That's a good question. We get that question a lot. And, and the answer is that there is pretty much only two things that cause the pH to go up in your pool. And and one, the biggest thing that causes the pH to go up in your pool is aeration and turbulence. And this can, can be a big thing and it can be a big problem in some pools. And the reason is that you have uh, waterfalls, you have spillways, you have rock formations uh, with water flowing over them. You have negative edge pools with large drops. Uh, anything that causes turbulence and aeration causes the pH to go up. And the reason that that happens is that we are uh, forcing CO2, carbon dioxide, or forcing carbon dioxide out of the water at the surface of the pool. And the CO2 leaves the, the water. And this um, CO2 that's in the pool is dissolved in the pool. We have aqueous CO2 in the pool and we have gaseous CO2 above the pool. So these two gases are in equilibrium. Um, according, to, <clears throat> um, according to Boyle's law, we have two gases uh, that, that have to be in equilibrium and they are in equilibrium. So when we force some CO2 out of the pool, then the pool's got to get some more CO2 in it. And it gets, gets it from carbonic acid that's in the pool. And the carbonic acid then goes down and the carbonic acid gets replaced by bicarbonate. And the bicarbonate goes down and it gets replaced by the carbonate. So we have carbonate, bicarbonate, uh, car carbonic acid and CO2 in the water. And when one of those gets changed, then everything has to adjust and make up for that change because they're all in equilibrium. So when we, when we create that turbulence, and even in a pool, to give you an odd example, if you had a bunch of kids making a bunch of cannonballs in the pool, it would raise the pH in the pool. So anything that causes turbulence and aeration raises the pH of the pool. So that's number one. Number two is that if your alkalinity is too high, it keeps pulling up your pH. So if you got an alkalinity, we, we have a target alkalinity of 90. So if your alkalinity gets up to 120, 130, 140, you put some acid in, the pH goes back down, you come back next week and it's right back up there. And the reason is that your alkalinity is so high, it just keeps pulling your pH up all the time. Of course, if you have aeration, you come back next week and the pH is up too. But there is something we can do about the pH going up all the time. And that is to add borate to the pool. And you can add any number of chemicals. The one that everybody knows about is called borax. Been around forever. Um, you can use boraxo. Uh, you can use borax in your washing machine to clean your, your clothes with. And you've been able to use it for like 175 years. It's been around forever. So you can use it, we can put it in the pool and it will keep the pH from going up. It doesn't prevent it, but it helps it, keeps it from going up so fast and so high. So it won't go up as high and it won't go up as fast if you put chlorine in your pool at 50 parts per million. You only need to put it in there once. And then whenever the borate level goes back down to say 30 parts per million, you top it off and fill it back up so we got 50 parts per million. So there is a third reason that pH can go up, 
And that is if you have a chlorine generator, if you have a, a salt pool, a salt water chlorine generator, an electric chlorine generator, whatever you, word fits for you, if you've got one of those generators that make chlorine, the pH in your pool is going to go up. And the reason is that in the process of making chlorine, we make sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a pH of 13. So we make it and it's going to raise the pH of the pool. So um, the other thing that happens, which we don't normally think about too much, but inside that uh, cell that makes the chlorine, we're also making hydrogen gas. That's a, a byproduct of making chlorine. So you make sodium hydroxide, hydrogen gas, and chlorine. And the hydrogen gas is a gas. Gas in water is aeration. So we make aeration in the chlorine generator. We make sodium hydroxide. The two of those things raises the pH of the pool. But again, we can put borate in there and it won't go up as fast or as high. The other advantage to using borate is this. Borate is an algistat. And by algistat, I mean that it prevents algae but doesn't kill it. So if we put borate in the pool at 50 parts per million, we can prevent algae that's introduced by wind and other things uh, that land in the pool and get started. It prevents that algae from getting started. And the advantage then is that if you don't have to have chlorine prevent the algae or take care of it once it starts growing, then you won't need as much chlorine. And this is the, a big part of what we teach in our school, in our class, I don't mean school, in our training. We teach this because uh, you will use less chlorine. And with a chlorine generator, if you use less chlorine, that means it's going to be on less. You can turn down the percentage that is on, and you can save almost 50% of the chlorine, which means if you've been running it at, at 70 or 80%, you can turn the chlorine generator down to maybe 20 or 30%. And, and that will mean that it's not running as long. So you'll extend the life of it. You'll have less problems with the pH going up because it won't be running so long, won't be making so much sodium hydroxide. So uh, borate is a great thing to keep the pH from going up in the pool. So the pH can go up for three reasons. Alkalinity is too high, aeration, or you have a saltwater chlorine generator. And, and that's it. It's not being raised because of liquid chlorine or calcium hydrochloride. Bob, thanks for that, guys. We will continue to do these videos for you and answering your questions. Bob has a website. It's pcti.online. We're going to put those comments in the comments below so that you can visit that site. Bob, I know that you have some books on water chemistry. For those that are interested, and we'll put those down here as well and put some links on there, but what books do you have available for the pool service guys and maybe the homeowners too with regards to water chemistry? Sure. Well, I've written 21 books on pool chemistry, but but the, there are two books that you must have. And one of them is called Pool Chemistry for Residential Pools. And it is a 226 page chemistry book. Um, it was written in 2018, so it's all up to date information. Um, it has lots of graphics in it, lots of cartoons, illustrations. Um, it explains everything about pool chemistry that you ever wanted to know. You can deep dive into it and get some great information. The other book that you should have is called Pool Chemistry for Service Pros. And I wrote this for service techs. And in it is a system that we teach about maintaining a pool if you're a service pro. And it teaches you how to maintain the pool. And you should own that book and keep a copy in your truck because you can refer to it and find what you need. It's only 28 pages long. So you can find stuff in it right away and figure out what you want to be doing. It is a great book. You need to have a copy in your truck. Then I took that same book and I rewrote it for uh, consumers. And it's really down to the level of C-spot run kind of, of stuff. And um, it is a, a consumer book called Easy Pool Chemistry. And it's completely written for a homeowner. 
as if they didn't know anything. So um, it's a great book to have. You can refer your homeowners to it. You can give them a copy. Um, even if you have a brand new hire uh, for your service business that doesn't know anything about pools, get them started with that first book. Then give them a second book so they can so they can increase their knowledge even farther. Those are the three that you really need to have. Absolutely. Guys, I own the two for the service. I recommend that you purchase those books, take a look at them. The other thing is, once again, you can go to Bob's website, which is pcti.online, and it is full of resources for you guys. You can also listen to Bob on our monthly podcast at the Pool Nation podcast, and he also joins us month a month on our Instagram live at pool.nation. You can find us there. We always take your questions from the pool service guys. We ask Bob and let him teach us on water chemistry. So guys, we hope you've enjoyed this video. Bob, thank you for your time. As hey, usual. Thank you. See you next time, guys. Guys, we'll catch you on the next one.